We're going to deal with point slope form and equation. First, a linear equation is defined by, defines a relationship between an x and y variable such that the change in y over the change in x is consistent. If you look at this table of values for points that are on a line to mean an equation, when you look at how the y's are changing, they're going up by 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. When you look at how the x's are changing, they're going up by 1's, plus 1, plus 1, etc. So the slope for this uh, line must be the change in y over the change in x. So the slope for the points that are on this line or in this equation uh, is 5 over 1. And since that's consistent from ordered pair to ordered pair, this is a linear relationship that y is always going up by 5 whenever x is going up by 1. That's what makes it linear. Well, then if we look at this, so let's go back to this guy right here. and We said everything goes up by 5. Do you agree we could write an equation for this in mx plus b form? We said the slope was 5. So it's 5x, and then we can see that the y-intercept is 0, 7, so b is 7. So you should see that that's the equation for this line. Now if you think about it, what happens if x equals 3? What would y equal to? Well, what we do is we put a 3 right here, and we add 7, so 15 plus 7 is 22. Oh, sure enough, when x is 3, y is 22. But I want us to see something really important. Uh, do you agree that to go from this uh, intercept right there up to that point, we're going to take one, two, three jumps. Each jump is going to involve adding five. Do we recall before that's exactly the definition of multiplication? You can add five together three times, or you can say, well, that's equivalent to five times three. I'm, I'm going to have... Uh, uh, my slope is 5, I keep going up by 5 each time, and I'm going to make 3 jumps. That's literally what that is. Now, this is a linear equation because of that characteristic. We keep adding 5 as y changes. That's also known as an arithmetic progression. When we get to sequences, this sequence of terms, these would be arithmetic because they keep jumping by 5. We keep adding the same amount. That makes it linear. In the very near future, we're going to go exponential. If you look at this, there is a pattern. How are the y's changing? Hopefully down here we can see that once you start at the, the beginning, the 3, then you keep multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2 to go from one term to the next. So this is not arithmetic. This is called geometric. This is a geometric progression of values of y. So what happens there is you get this equation where you're still going to start out with 3, just like you started out with 7 before, but you're going to start out with 3, and then we know what it means to keep multiplying by 2. That means you're going to multiply by 2 raised to the x. So if you go from the 0 term to the 4 term, you're going to multiply by 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So to find what y is when x is 4, you say, oh, y will equal 3 times 2 raised to the 4th, because we're going to multiply by 2 4 times. Well, 2 to the 4th power is 16. 3 times 16 is 48. Whoa, when x is 4, y is going to be 48. This is geometric progression. This is arithmetic. This is an exponential equation, the variables in the exponent. This is a linear equation. You have a linear equation when you keep increasing at a steady rate. You keep adding 5. So when we're talking about linear equations, we're talking about relationships between y and x that have a steady, consistent increase uh, in y as x uh, continues to increase. So, got three forms. We've already done this. This is slope-intercept. This is the guy we're working on right now. This is called point-slope form. We'll deal with that guy later. So point-slope form is, is one form of a linear equation that we want to deal with next. So let's look at these two forms, and let's go back to this data right here. And let's use this table once again to write this equation. Well, we know from before that we said we kept going up by 5 when x went up by 1. So m, the slope, is 5. That goes right there. So it's 5x. Our origination point is point zero 0.07, that's the y-intercept because x is 0, so b must be 7. No problem, we have that equation right there, and we can get that from the, the table of values. 
But now what we have is we have a point slope form. The slope still goes there. This y stays, there's no subscript, so that y is a permanent fixture. That x is a permanent fixture. The three things we need to put into this form is the slope, which is still 5, it's linear, it's going up by 5, so the slope goes right here. Now, x1, y1, we know what that means. That means pick any point that's on the line. Let's go to this bad boy right here. If this is a point on the line, we can call this x1, the x-coordinate of that point, and y sub 1, the y-coordinate of that point. And those values go into the equation where they belong. So the x sub 1, the 3, goes right here. So it's minus 3, and this y value, 22, goes right here where it says y sub 1. That's how you put in a point and the slope. This x and this y stay there. So there it is, that's point slope form. A lot of times in advanced math, we just say, hey look, we got our equation. I don't need to find the y-intercept if I don't want to. That's good enough, I'm happy. But, you know what, let's do one more thing. Let's solve for y, meaning let's get y by itself. I wonder what would happen if we got y by itself. Well, let's get rid of this 22. So let's add 22 to both sides. So we could add 22 over here. That leaves us with y equals, you know what, let's distribute the 5 here. 5 times x is 5x, 5 times negative 3 is minus 15, and let's add the 22, and let's clean this up. We end up with y is equal to 5x, uh, oh, y equals 5x plus 7. Oh, it's the same equation as the slope inter form, just intercept form, just in disguise. That's why they're modeling the exact same line, but we have choices. If we know we have the y-intercept and the slope, boom, let's go here. That's the easiest form. If they didn't reveal to us what the y-intercept was, no problem. We just go and grab any other point that's on the line. And we put the 3 there and the 22 there, and life is good. Okay, now, this form right here, let's, let's do another one. So we got point-slope form. Let's say we have a point at 2, 7, boop, and we got another point at, let's say, 5, 1. All right? We need an equation for the line that passes through these two points right here. Okay, we need two things. We need the slope, and we need just one point. We have two points to choose from. We can just use one point. Well, first we need the slope. We didn't really talk about this on the last video, but let's do it now. If we go from this point down to this point, we're gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six units in the y direction, that's a minus six. Then from there, we're gonna go over one, two, three in the x direction, that's plus three. Slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x, negative 6 divided by 3, that's negative 2. So we now know that this slope is negative 2. Okay, well then all we need from there is one point. Now we know it's going to be y minus here and x minus right here. And all we need to put in is the x coordinate and the y coordinate of either point. Let's choose this point up here. Again, this was the point 2, 7. So if we put a 7 here and a 2 here, we're done. That's our equation. That's good enough. A person that comes across this equation can say, you know what, I see my slope, negative 2, and I know that the point 2, 7 is on the line. So we can get a lot of information from that. And it's fine. You can just leave that right there. Now, you also have the right, instead, to choose the other point. The other point was a point 5, 1. So the y value was 1, the slope is still negative 2, and the x value was 5. Would this equation be equivalent to that one? Well, you bet your sweet bet. If you were to distribute the negative 2 here, you would get negative 2x plus 4. Add the 7 to this side, you get plus 7. Your final equation would be y equals negative 2x plus 11. That would be that equation right there. How about this guy? Distribute the negative 2. We get negative 2x plus 10. If we add 1 to both sides, by golly, we're going to end up with y equals negative 2x plus 11. They give us the same line if we put it in slope-intercept form. So we see that the point-slope form will work. Hey, you know what? I'd like to know where this comes from. Where does that slope-intercept or that point-slope form come from? Huh. Hey, what's that over there? Wait a second. Look at this. Does that look familiar to you? Comes from the slope formula. What happens is, you could say like on that line that we just had, we had the point 2, 7, and we had the point 5, 1. And actually if, uh, so here's the point 2, 7, there's the point 5, 1,
But then the way this works is we just say, you know, we could pick any other general point on the line, and we're just going to say generally it's the point x and y. It could be infinitely many values that could go in there. Well, we already knew the slope was negative 2. So what we can do is we can say, okay, look, the slope was negative 2. But how do you find slope? Well, if this is the first x and the first y, and this is the second x and the second y, we would take the second y minus the first y divided by the second x minus the first x. Specific, oh, sorry, minus the first x, x sub 1. So we get that right there, but more specifically, we take the general y, the second y, minus the first y, which was 7, and then divide it by the second x, the general x, minus the first x, which was 2, and this is all equal to negative 2. And now what we can do is swing this puppy up here, this quantity x minus 2 can jump up yonder, so what we're going to end up with is y minus 7 equals uh, negative 2 times x minus 2. That's point slope form, the x coordinate and the y coordinate of that point right there. If you like that, fine. If not, no big whoop. Last problem right here. Find the equation of line that is perpendicular to this line here, and it contains the point 3, negative 2. We don't know the y-intercept for our line. We know it for that line, but not for our line. So we don't have a y-intercept. But what do we have? We have a point, and we can use this here to find our slope. Our slope won't be that because our line is perpendicular, but we know what to do. Perpendicular lines have opposite inverse slopes, so the opposite of this would be a negative, and the inverse would be 3 fifths. So we know that our slope is negative 3 fifths, didn't write that very well, but that's a negative 3 fifths, and we know our point, x sub 1, y sub 1, is this guy right here. So we bust out the point slope formula, just remember that this is how it works, and we start putting in our values. So we have y minus, our y coordinate is negative 2, so this is y minus a negative 2 equals, our slope would be negative 3 fifths, and then we're going to do x minus the x coordinate of the point we have, which is 3, so there we go. Now we'd like to just do one thing to clean it up, instead of leaving this as y minus a negative 2, we'll just make that um, the opposite operation and the opposite number under addition. So our final, final answer would be on the left side, this would be y plus 2 equals all that on the right side. There you go, point slope form. Uh, hopefully that makes sense.